What's up guys, Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Single engine operations in the Boeing versus the bus. In a nutshell answer, I'm gonna share with you in the 737, it is considerably more challenging than in the A320. For several factors which we're gonna dive into right now, but it's going to essentially feed my response to the question I get asked frequently, which is Joe, what type rating do you recommend that I do? And my follow-up question back to that is, what is your background and what are your intentions beyond type rating training? Generally speaking, for someone with relatively limited background, particularly on jets, really coming from a GA background, the 320 you're gonna find is considerably easier to fly and especially in a single engine operation because of these elements that I'm gonna to describe to you here momentarily. And it really begins with the autopilot's capability and where the trim, rudder trim, is located. Uh, and these really play into how easy or how not easy, how challenging it may be for you to be able to manage this single engine operation. So let's get into it. Fortunately, I'm typed on both, I've flown both, I instruct on both, and we're gonna review both. Behind me is a 737NG picture, as you can see the cockpit. What I'm gonna share with you about the Boeing, love the 7.3 by the way, it's where I got started in the, world, in the realm of type ratings. The autopilot does not trim the rudder. Number one, autopilot does not trim the rudder. That's the first thing. There's no yaw authority that the autopilot has. So for, if you're taking notes, that'd be the first thing to write down. Second thing, the auto throttle does not work single engine. So not only are you having to manage your rudder inputs manually, you are also having to manage your thrust inputs manually as well in the Boeing. Now that is not true in the 320, in the Airbus here, which we happen to have a model of here in the, in the uh, studio. The 320 has auto thrust, similar to auto throttle, auto thrust capability, both with two engines and single engine, it works just as good. And apart from that, it, the autopilot has the ability to trim the rudder, which is huge because what happens is that, remember, rudder inputs vary primarily by two factors, thrust and speed. So if I vary airspeed and or vary thrust, I'm going to need a rudder change or rudder input variance to accommodate what's needed to maintain that aircraft tracking, whether it be down the center line or tracking straight on a heading or track, etc. right? So imagine for a moment that you just took off. Let's think about this now and how this is going to play out or you did a go around let's go with a go around example you just did a go around you're in the airbus uh, the autopilot stays on in a go around by the way not true on the 737 unless you're doing a dual channel approach which is a different subject but anyway point being i just did a go around and i'm single engine the autopilot's connected the whole time the auto thrust comes up with toga power. The autopilot's trimming the rudder to maintain that directional control. I get to the engine at acceleration altitude, push to level off, begin accelerating. As I accelerate, more airflow, more airspeed over the rudder, which means we're gonna have to vary the rudder input and because the autopilot has rudder trim authority, it starts trimming that for you, which means you're essentially seated there, hands off, feet off, really not having to do anything. And the auto thrust starts reducing thrust for you when you're approaching your target speed and as it reduces thrust yet again another rudder input change which the autopilot's handling so imagine how dire or how much workload is it for you single engine operation with autopilot and auto thrust managing everything in a 320 non-event coupled together with the fact that you can put the autopilot on as low as 100 feet in the 320 on both a takeoff and a go around. On the 73NG, you're looking at no lower than 400 feet for autopilot engagement. And as mentioned, the autopilot doesn't even trim the rudder and it doesn't have single engine auto throttle capability. So now the same takeoff flown in the 737, let's look at that or the same go around. We do the go around, stay with me. Imagine this is a 73 for a moment. I have to hit toga and apply thrust when I hit toga with a single autopilot connected, which is typically how we fly all ILSs usually, unless it's cat two or three, that autopilot disconnects. So now I'm left to hand fly, manually apply thrust, manually begin pitching up, make your call outs, go around flaps one, positive rate gear up. As you start bringing the nose up and adding power, you're gonna have to add rudder. You're gonna have to trim the rudder in. Then you're gonna connect the autopilot. When you connect the autopilot, you still have to keep the rudder pressure there 
because the autopilot, remember, doesn't trim that rudder. Now I reach the acceleration altitude. Okay, so now we begin to lower the nose to accelerate forward. That's an airspeed change, which means I have a rudder input change that the autopilot can't do because it doesn't control the rudder. Now I gotta reach back and trim the rudder again. Then I'm approaching the target speed. I have to pull the power off because there's no auto thrust to reduce the power. So now I gotta manually reduce it. When I reduce the thrust, that's another rudder input change. So there's a continual back and forth between thrust lever, rudder trim, thrust lever, rudder trim. And it can be a little bit of a nuisance, somewhat annoying, particularly because the rudder trim selector is pretty, you can't even see it on this image back here, but it's pretty far aft on the pedestal. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, maybe you have an opportunity to jump seat or get in a sim of a 737, take a look at where the rudder trim is. I mean, if this is me seated in any of the two seats, captain or FOC, I have to reach back behind my back to reach the rudder trim while still flying. So you're in this position, as opposed to on a 320, the rudder trim selector, which you would only need if the autopilot was off, is right here. It's, it's basically right where my shoulder is. It's very comfortable to reach over and just start trimming and have your, your hand here on the side stick. So overall, the ergonomics and the workload is considerably less and better designed in a 320 and therefore breeds for an environment where single engine operations in an A320, frankly, they're just easier. In the 737, certainly a little more work intensive. Now, with that being said, you heard me say, oh, it's easier in a 320 to perhaps fly it, especially single engine operation. But the one challenge for the 320 really that I find with students is learning it, the theory part. Because it's so highly automated, there's a lot of theory and practicality and automation that goes into that. And so when you're ground school, it tends to be a little bit more challenging. And then in the sim, it tends to be a little bit simpler. And the same could be said in reverse for the 737, whereby in the ground school, it's a bit simpler. But then once you get into the sim to actually fly the jet, it gets to be a little bit more challenging, particularly for those with a little experience or not too much background. Hope this video makes sense. Hope it finds you well and safe and your family are doing well. Uh, we very much want to work with you. You can get a type rating with us here on either airplane, 320 or 737. You can do an ATP, CTP with us here to acquire your FAA ATP. All of our prices are on our site, onestepprepacademy.com. Uh, we got plenty of video training, onestepprep.com, and we have several live events that we have coming up November 1st second and fourth, which is going to be 737, A320, and the AX3 certification for those of you that are instructors or looking to become an instructor. So hopefully we see you here in person for one of these events, one of the type rating courses, or we see you online virtually, or you sign up and join our family here for an online course. All right. Hope to work with you, Juan and Joe, your friends and training program success at onestepprep.com. I'll see you in another video.